To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon. Friends, whenever certain raw material passes through a process in order to get converted into finished goods, we said we will apply the process costing method. Now, what do we exactly do under the process costing method? We identify all the costs that we are going to incur in relation to a particular process and we are going to account for it separately. So when the goods pass from process 1 to process 2, along with the goods, what we also do is we transfer the cost from process 1 to process 2. Now, what we need to understand here is in process costing, what we have learned is that, you know, raw materials are going to introduce in a process, let's say process 1 and then the entire output of this process 1 is going to become the input of process 2. So when the output of process 1 goes to process 2, we transfer the cost also entirely to process 2. But let's say we take the example of crude oil processing operations. Now when we process crude oil, we are going to get multiple products. For example, we are going to get natural gas, we are going to get you know raw petrol, we are going to get raw diesel and so on and so forth. Now the question which I want to ask you guys is, when I was processing crude oil, we were incurring you know cost in relation to the processing of crude oil and we were debiting the crude oil processing account with all the cost. But now when I look at the output, I am having more than one output. Alright, I am having raw petrol, I am having raw diesel, I am having natural gas, LPG, so on and so forth. Now the question is, whatever cost we incurred for the crude oil processing, should I transfer it to raw petrol? Should I transfer it to raw diesel? Should I transfer it to LPG? Or should I transfer it to natural gas? Where should I transfer this cost? How much should each you know output take? So this becomes a problem. Now such scenarios where one common raw material is used and you know it is introduced into one common process but we get two or more outputs is called as joint products by products. Here the main challenge is how much of the joint cost? What do we mean by joint cost? the cost incurred up to the point where the common processing is undertaken. So the cost incurred before the you know two or three products have come into existence before the split off point before the separation point all the cost whatever we incur are called as joint cost. Now the main consideration is or the main discussion point is whenever we incur certain joint cost how these joint costs have to be apportioned between the various outputs that we get. So what are we saying? If there was one single output that was coming out of process 1 and going into the process 2, our life is very simple. We have to identify what is the cost incurred in process 1 and along with the goods the entire cost has to go to process 2. But when we have two or more products coming out of process 1, then we also have to do an additional exercise. We have to identify as to how the cost incurred in process 1 which is called as pre-separation cost or joint cost, how these joint costs are to be divided, are to be apportioned, are to be allocated between the two or more products that we get or two or more products that emerge from the joint process which is process 1. So this we are going to learn in our current chapter that is the joint products and byproducts. Now before we actually deep dive into the topic joint products and byproducts, it is important for us to understand what do we call as joint products and when do we call some products as byproducts. Alright, so whether we talk about joint products or byproducts, we are talking about a scenario where from a common process we get two or more outputs. Now what is the distinction then between joint product and byproduct? The distinction is the importance or relevance of the products. Alright, when two or more products which emerge out of a common process are of equal prominence they are all having equal importance, they are all having some significant value, then these products are called as joint products. For example, when we process the crude oil, we get raw petrol, raw diesel, LPG, natural gas, etc. Now all these common products which we are getting from the common processing of crude oil are having equal importance, are having significant value. So each one of them are going to be called as joint products. But on the other hand, Let's say if we take the example of sugar processing or sugarcane processing, when we process the sugarcane, we are going to get sugar as well as we are going to get molasses. Now here, sugar is of importance, it is having significant value. But when we talk about molasses, 
it is you know relatively insignificant when we compare it with the relevance or significance of sugar so here molasses it is not something that we want but it is incidentally coming from the processing of sugar cane so the main product our main focus here is sugar but if when we you know process the sugar cane for obtaining sugar we are also going to get incidentally molasses so here molasses is going to become our by product so when we talk about joint products all the products are of equal prominence or all the products are of equal significance there is no distinction between okay this is the main product this is the by product so on and so forth but when we talk about by products out of the two or more outputs that we get few are going to be the main products and few are going to be the by products these by products are insignificant in value they are not that important they are not of equal prominence when compared with the main products and that is why they are called as incidental products so to summarize whenever there is a common process whenever there are common inputs and by processing these common inputs we get two or more outputs then we are talking about joint products and by products if the outputs that we get are of equal importance then we are going to call it as joint products but if there are some output which are of greater importance and uh, you know some outputs of less significance or lesser importance we are going to call it as a case of you know by products where there is going to be a main product and then there is going to be a incidental product which is the by product the main thing that we are going to learn in this topic is how the common cost how the joint cost have to be distributed between the joint products and by products how are we going to apportion the cost between the various products that emerge out of a common process now you may ask me a question so why is this separation or distinction required why is it even relevant for our discussion see if i want to know the profitability of the petrol that comes out of crude oil manufacturing or i want to know separately the profit of uh, you know profit from the sale of diesel that we are going to generate from further processing of raw diesel into the finished product how are we going to know that how can we arrive at the profits we can arrive at the profits only if we know what is the cost of the raw diesel only if you know what is the cost of the raw petrol so for the purpose of determining what is the costing for the purpose of determining what is the profitability for the purpose of understanding how the cost is being utilized and for the purpose of valuing the closing stock you know we will have to understand how the common cost or joint cost can be separated how the common cost joint cost can be apportioned between the various products if we don't do the apportionment we will not be able to understand what is the value of the stock we will not be able to understand what is the profitability or we will not be in a position to you know take decisions as to what should be the selling price of the products so the segregation of cost is very very important friends let's take a small example in order to understand few important terms in this topic so let's say there is raw material x which is being introduced in process 1 and at the end of the process 1 after the processing we get four products let's say a b c and d now out of these four products let us say products a b and c are of equal importance and equal prominence and they are equally significant then we are going to call these uh, you know three products a b and c as what we are going to call these products as joint products whenever the products have equal prominence importance we call them as joint products but then the fourth product product d now this product has uh, you know insignificant value and it is you know not as important or it is not as significant when compared to the three other products a b and c so how, what are we going to call this fourth product we are going to call this fourth product as the by product so the products which are of less significance which are not as important as the main products we are going to call them as by products all right so what did we do we took the raw material x we put the raw material x in process 1 at the end of process 1 we got four products the main products or joint products a b and c and the pi product d all right now the process 1 which we are undertaking is called as the joint process so this is the common process where we are getting the three main products the joint products and one by product now next the cost that we are incurring in process 1 including the cost of raw material and the conversion cost are called as joint cost so what are joint cost all the cost that we are going to incur up to the point of separation 
or whatever cost we incur for the common processing of the main raw materials and which is incurred jointly for all the products i am not incurring that you know raw material x cost or the conversion cost independently or separately for a b c or d i am incurring this cost jointly so all the cost which are incurred jointly or commonly are called as joint cost now these joint cost are sometimes also called as pre separation cost all right now the end of process 1 all right the end of process 1 at which the four products emerge or at which the four products come into existence is called as the split off point or it is called as the separation point so at a very broad level there is this thin line of division which divides the entire cost between pre separation and post separation that line of division is called as the split off point all the costs that are incurred before the split off point are called as joint cost common cost or pre separation cost all the cost which are incurred after the split off point are called as post separation cost or post split off cost now you may ask me sir we understand that okay raw material x has to be introduced raw material x has to be processed and only then the four products will come into existence so there is a need for us to you know incur the pre separation cost or there is a need for us to incur the common cost joint cost but then what are you talking about the post separation what are the costs that we are going to incur after the four products have come into existence see it may not be necessary that once the four products come into existence we will sell the products in the market as is where is we may consider and we may further process the four products into finished goods and then we may sell it in the market so when we you know are further processing the products and when we are incurring certain additional cost in order to convert those uh, you know joint products into finished goods then we are going to call such cost as you know the post separation cost also sometimes what happens is in order to sell these goods we may have to incur some uh, you know selling expenses or certain administrative expenses distribution expenses so all such administration distribution selling and uh, you know other overheads are going to be called as post separation cost so we have pre separation cost and we have post separation cost these post separation costs are also sometimes called as further processing costs so what are the terms that we have learned joint products by products joint cost or pre separation cost further processing cost or post separation cost and the point at which the new products emerge that is called as the split off point or the point of separation so these key terms have to be kept in mind while we actually do the you know understanding of the concept friends now the most important discussion in this topic is going to be as to how are we going to segregate as to how are we going to apportion or as to how we are going to distribute the joint cost between the various products that emerge out of a common process